Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to the Pioneer Bible Club. We are thrilled that you're tuning in today to join with us for this very special day. And this is the Lord's Day, the day we would typically be gathered in our chapels and churches and, and places of worship. But today we're gathering together like this and trusting God to meet with us. So let's bow our heads in prayer and ask Him to do just that, to visit with us in our homes, to teach us from His Word and from these other things that we'll be involved in. But let's pray now and ask the Lord to come and to be with us. Father, we thank Thee for today and the opportunity we have now to meet like this and to worship Thee through singing of songs and hymns, uh, to study Thy Word, to learn more about Thee. We pray for these dear children from all over the world who are watching. We pray especially for their salvation that they would know Thee as Lord and Savior. We pray for their physical health and well-being, that all their needs will be provided during this time. But Lord, bless us and meet with us now in this little gathering, and may we be spiritually fed and uplifted. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. Okay, I want you to have your Bibles ready with me, please. In just a few moments, we'll have our scripture reading and our memory verse in the Bible lesson. But before we do, let's sing some songs of joy. Welcome to Songs of Joy. We're going to start today by singing Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. O ye saints that dwell on the mountain of Zion, praise him. Praise Him ever in joyful song. Since I have been redeemed, I have a song I love to sing. Since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed since I have been redeemed since I have been redeemed I will glory in his name since I have been redeemed I will glory in my Savior's name Hello boys and girls and welcome back to Our God Is. And you can see right here I'm in the middle of shopping. And I'm just getting a few bits and bobs before I head back home. And, oh, I tell you what, oh, I forgot to bring my wallet. I forgot to bring my money. Oh, I wonder if your parents or grandparents or carers have ever done that before. And you go shopping and you have everything that you want and you forget to bring your wallet you forget to bring your money now how am I going to be able to pay for all of this maybe I have to put it all back huh. oh I know I just remembered I have something very special let me show you something let me just get it out I have a coupon now you say well what is a coupon this is something that allows me to take off money for the price of something that I'm buying it helps me to be able to to pay all of this well let's see what does it say this coupon says that I am entitled to one free shop at this supermarket <gasps> that's amazing that means that everything that I have here I can pay for with this coupon now you know that tells us and reminds me about how our God is a God of redemption you say well what does the word redemption mean 
That word redemption means to buy back. And I'd like to read a verse for you. It says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Did you know this, that we can have redemption, we can be brought back to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the redemption that we find. When all of these things here, all of this shopping that I wasn't able to pay for, just like this, we all owe a debt to God. Did you know that we've sinned against God and we've broken His law? And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. There's a payment that you and I cannot pay for ourselves. But with that coupon, that helps us to understand how this can all be paid for. Did you know that there is a way that we can be brought back to God? And that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because our God is a God of redemption. First time, I hope that you guys are ready with your thinking caps on to memorize the memorable information that we've been memorizing here because it's going to be memorable. So we are very excited because we are continuing to work through the book of Galatians, a book of the Bible written by the Apostle Paul to the church in Galatia in chapter number four, verse four and five. So we hope that you guys have been hiding in your minds and in your hearts. And we are going to have a competition today to see who's better, the boys or the girls. Which isn't usually a problem because usually the girls are better. But what we'll do, just to make it fair, we will go through the whole thing once. Once. And then we'll move over to the competition. Okay, so we will give us a bit of practice before we get into the competition. Are so, you guys ready? Especially the gentlemen. Here we go on the count of three, two, one. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. Very good. And so in this verse, we've been looking how God sent forth his son to be our redeemer. Mm. That we might be welcomed into God's family because of the Lord Jesus and what he's done for us. And now what I want you to make a note of in your mind is how that might be like this, the Bible lesson that we've been looking at. We've been looking at the life of Ruth, haven't we? Mm. And there was a man that has been introduced to us and he was called a kinsman redeemer. That's right, that's that same word to be bought back. And his name, do you know his name? Boaz, Boaz. that's right, very good. But we want you to pay extra attention in the lesson today to see how this verse is like the Bible lesson or how you can see us in the Bible lesson because this is talking about a redeemer and like in the Bible lesson there's a kinsman redeemer so I want you to be, make a note of that and pay extra attention in the lesson today how as to how the verse is similar to the lesson that we're looking at. Very good now we are going to dive right into our competition mm -hmm. and I want to see which ones are going to do the best we know it's the boys anyways and we're going to do this I'm going to let the ladies have the heavier load because That's we're right. very gentlemanly and we'll let them take the red <laughs> and so the boys will do the blue and then everybody will do the white and then second time we'll swap and the boys will carry the heavy load because I'm sure the girls will be worn out. After. I think we should keep up the pace too. You know, we've been going a bit slow but, you know, let's pick up the pace a little bit. Perfecto. We? Here we go on the count of four, three, two, one. Galatians, Galatians chapter, chapter 4, four verse, verse 4 and 5. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Galatians, Galatians chapter 4, four verse, verse 4 and 5. five. Very good, Miss Joanna. She did a very good job. I wonder how you guys did at home. 
I wonder if the boys or the girls at your household are doing better or worse or worse or better. Or maybe we need to get some of the parents involved. Now, we always mm -hmm. like to get the parents and the yeah. adults involved. Sometimes they might be sitting off, not paying attention, looking at their phone or something. Well, you youngins grab them and tell them it's memory verse time. And it doesn't matter what age we are. We should all be memorizing God's word. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. So let's, now let's swap it. The boys will do the red and the girls can do the blue. Okay? On the count of four. Three, two, one. Galatians, Galatians chapter, chapter 4, four verse, verse 4 and 5. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Galatians, Galatians chapter, chapter 4, four verse, verse 4 and 5. five. Ooh, very, very good. It's a close one, I think, today. Very, very close. Very good. Well, we are so thankful that you guys are working with us to hide God's Word in your heart. And I, I promise you that this will help you if you guys know God's Word. Hello boys and girls and welcome to the prayer time on the Pioneer Bible Club. It is so good to be with you today, particularly on the Lord's Day. But today we want to highlight to you a new community to pray for. There are many different communities up and down our land and we're going to pray today for a special one. To help us with this, we're going to ask one of our friends, his name is Mr. Tommy Wall, to tell us how we can pray for him and his community at this time. He's gonna also ask us to pray for some other things. So make sure you have a pen and paper and write these things down. Let's go and hear from him now. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Tommy Wall. I'm the deacon of Oxford Baptist Chapel. And I'm a traveler, gypsy, if you would like to call me that as well. Um, I'd like you to pray, especially for the gypsy people in England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, and all over the world for that matter and keep them in your prayers because we need their souls to be saved. And I know that Jesus has told us that little children, when they pray, that God listens to them, and he listens to them very fervently. Because in one of the scriptures he said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So I'd like you from the pioneer clubs all over the world, in England, and even in America, Canada, and especially our friends in the Netherlands and Northern Ireland. So I'd like you children to keep the traveling people in your prayers, not only just the traveling people, but for their souls to be saved. But I'd like you to, to pray for the, the nurses all over the world and the doctors that's helping us all. Keep them in your prayers also. And don't forget your granny and grandfather, because they're very, very special. So I thank, my Lord, thank the Lord for your granny and grandfather and keep them in your prayers. And God bless you, the Pioneer Club all over the world and in England as well. God bless you all. Very good, it was good to hear there, wasn't it, from Mr. Wall, and I hope you'll be praying for some of the things he's mentioned. Remember, boys and girls, you can write these things down, not pray for them just today, but you can pray for them whenever you remember, and ask the Lord to help in all these different things. Today, remember how we're doing this A, B, C? Some of you are getting really good at it, but you know what, today, I'm gonna ask you to lead it at home. I'm not gonna say A, B, C, I'm just going to do the actions and I want you to do it at home and I'll see if I can hear you. Okay, are you ready? You do it after three. One, two, three. Good. Very good. Very good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we thank you that you are the most holy God. There is nobody like thee, Lord, in all the earth and we worship you today especially on the Lord's Day. Please bless this Bible club. Please pour out thy spirit and save boys and girls and mums and dads today. And Lord, the most important thing we need today is thee. Please, please, Lord, I pray you'd give that to these boys and girls. And Lord, we do pray particularly for the traveling community today. We ask thee that many of them would come to know the Lord Jesus as their savior. Work in them and save them, Lord, we pray. Save the young boys and girls that live in those communities, we pray as well. And Lord, we do pray for our grandmas and our granddads. Surely, Lord, many of these boys and girls haven't seen them for perhaps many weeks. Lord, please, please bless each one and 
please reunite them again soon, we pray. So bless us today in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And remember, boys and girls, we want to hear from you with your prayer requests. So you can go onto our website, cchtrust.org.uk, maybe get your mum and dad to help you, and you can fill in a prayer request. We want to hear from you. God bless you, boys and girls. See you next time on the Pioneer Bible Club. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Luke, and I'm here to share with you how I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal saviour. So, when I was a young boy, I went to Sunday school with my family, my two sisters, Charmaine and Holly, and uh, I was very good at putting my hands up to answer the questions. So good, in fact, that I would come home every Sunday with many sweets. Mars bars, Snickers, so many sweets. Anyway, as I got older, I fell in love with the world. I was more interested in style, clothing, games, music, films, books, everything this world had to offer. And uh, it got to the point where I was just such a seeker of pleasure that all my biblical knowledge and the idea of sin had just completely left my mind. And it got to a point where I moved away from my parents' house to pursue a life of uh, pleasure and of, of doing things that I wanted to do. I wanted to form my own way. I wanted to make my own path. You see, I, I believed in God and I believed uh, some of the things that the Bible had to say, but I thought it was just one truth out of many and all beliefs were equal. And, uh, you know, it didn't matter what you believed as long as you just kept going in your own way. But after, you know, years of seeking pleasure, it got to the point where I really began to damage my health uh, so badly, actually, that one night I really didn't think I was uh, going to be around for much longer. And it was very scary. And in that time, I really didn't have a clue what to do. So I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, please save me. Please save my body. I want to live. And uh, he did save my body and I did live. But I realized that shortly afterwards, even though he had saved my body, there was still a problem with my soul. I, uh, I didn't really... Uh, Realize up until that point that I'd built up a huge debt of sin throughout my entire life. Every single time I'd made the wrong decision, every single time I'd said the wrong words or I'd been horrible or I'd told a lie, I realized that all of these things were stacked up against me and if I was to face God then and there, then I wouldn't stand a chance. So after reading the Bible and reading the Gospels, I learned more about the character of Jesus and how he's so willing to forgive us if only we would come to him. So. I read the Bible and I cried and I realized that I was such a sinner and I cried out to the Lord and said, please save me Lord, forgive my sin because I'm really not doing very well with my life. And he did forgive me and ever since then I've been walking with him and that's not to say it's been a perfect walk, there have been a few times when I've uh, fallen backwards and done things I shouldn't have but I'm always reminded of the Lord's faithfulness and his willingness to forgive and his love for me and that keeps us going. And uh, I pray that you can all experience this one day and I'll, I'll be praying that you uh, seek the Lord fervently and that one day you'll be walking with him as well. I hope you're doing well today and I have something so exciting and so important that I want to share with you from God's Word. But first I have to tell you about something that my wife, Miss Gracie, got me today. This morning I had to get up a little early. I had to take our car to the shop to get some work done on it. And Gracie, Miss Gracie, brought me something very nice. Look what I have here. I have a large hot cup of coffee. Now how many of you like coffee? Oh yes, I really enjoy coffee. It keeps me awake in the morning. And I have to ask you another question. Now we like coffee, but let me ask you this. If I went to the coffee shop and I ordered a large hot coffee and I had all the stuff put in it that I like and the man or the woman, they, they made the coffee and they set it on the counter. Do you think that I could just take the coffee and walk out of the store? Well, why not? I can't just walk out. What do I have to do? That's right. I have to buy or I have to pay for my coffee. Now I have here my wallet and right here I have sticking out, I have five American US dollars and I could use these five dollars and I could pay for my coffee. Now, I wanna tell you about something very important in God's word. Do you know that the Bible says that we have been bought? And you say, Mr. Jonathan, where does the Bible say that we have been bought and who bought us? Let me read you two verses 
in 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse 19 and verse 20. Let me read you verse 19 and 20. The Bible says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Boys and girls, this is an amazing Bible truth. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, he came and he died on the cross. He paid for our sin and he bought us with a price. Let me show you a verse that tells us that in the book of Romans, chapter number five and verse number eight, the word of God says, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Boys and girls, do you realize that Jesus Christ, he came to this earth and he died on the cross to pay, not for his sin. He had no sin. He is God's son. He's God. He, he did nothing wrong. But no, he paid for my sin, the things that I've done wrong. He paid for all of your sins, the things that you have done wrong. And do you know that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he didn't just die for me. He didn't just die for you. He died for every man, every woman, every boy and girl in the entire world. And the Bible says that all we have to do to receive this gift that he has bought for us is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says in the book of Acts. And then in the book of Romans, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So boys and girls, I want to encourage you today with this truth that the Bible says Jesus Christ died on the cross and he bought sinners back to God. Now today we're going to learn about buying back. We're going to learn a word that means to be bought back and, and we'll learn about that in a minute. But if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your savior, I want you to know the Bible says that Jesus Christ died for you. And today, you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are a Christian, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that we've been bought with a price. And because we've been bought, we must glorify God with our bodies. Our lives should tell all those around us that God has made a difference, that God has changed us, that we're not the same that we used to be. We're different. But I want to encourage you with this. The Bible says that we have been bought with a price. Our next song has some action, so we have to stand up on our feet and join in with these actions on Rolled Away. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Every sin had to go beneath the crimson flow. Hallelujah, roll away, roll away, roll away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed. Redeemed, his child and forever I am. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho! Oh, such a one, turn aside, sit down there. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down there. And they sat down. And he said unto the, the kinsman, 
Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then them said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this, now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore the kinsman said unto Boaz, Buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders, and unto the, all the people, Ye are witnesses this day, that I have bought all that was Elimelech's, and all that was Chilion's and Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren, and from the gate of his place ye are witnesses this day. All right, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible lesson. I hope you have your Bible with you, and you can take your Bible, and you can follow along with me, and we'll, we're going to read from the book of Ruth, chapter 4. And we've come to the very final lesson. To help us with our lesson today, I've got a very special word here, and this is our word for the day, if you remember. It's the word redeem. And it, we've got some different letters here that tell us what these different things mean. The first thing that we find here, that's very important, we're gonna peel off number one here. This was really important business. You see, he had gone and he had found this man and he'd said, sit down here at a very special place. Where did he sit down? Were you reading? Were you listening? That's right. They sat down at the gates of Bethlehem. And the gates of the city were a very special place back then. That's where you went if you had really important business to do. If you needed to buy something or sell something, or if there was a really big decision or a big judgment, you would go to the gate to the city. And so Boaz found this man, this other kinsman, and he brought him to the gate of the city and they sat down there. And it was such important business that, this is number two, we have number two here, that they had the elders gathered together. So the elders came and they gathered together. He got 10 men of the city. These were people that were going to make decisions. They were witnesses. Boaz wanted to make sure some witnesses were there because it was such an important business. And this kinsman was there and Boaz was there and the elders were there. So Boaz had a very wise plan. He was a very wise man and he that's our third one, a deal was suggested. So he said, this lady Naomi, we know her husband died, didn't we? Her husband Elimelech. She wants to sell a piece of land. And since you are the nearest kinsman, you get the first rights to it. Would you like to buy that land that she wants to sell? And the man thought, hmm, I would quite like to buy a piece of land. That would be nice. He was thinking how much money he could make with that land how nice it would be to have that piece of land. So he, you can imagine, he maybe jumped straight up and raised his hand and he said, I will redeem it. I will buy it. And that's what he wanted. But there was more to it as well. Because Boaz said in verse number five, then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field at the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess. He said, well, if you're going to buy the land, you also have to take Ruth. 
You see, her husband is dead, and as the near kinsman, it's your job to raise up, to marry this woman, and to raise up a seed, and to follow after that name, to take her and be your wife. And then something happened to this man who, a moment ago, wanted to buy the land. All of a sudden, he began to make an excuse when he heard that he had to take Ruth as well. He began to make an excuse. He said, wait a second, wait a second. I can't take this woman, Ruth, to be my wife. I cannot redeem it. If I did that, I would, I would mar or I would ruin my own inheritance, he said. And I don't want to ruin my own inheritance. I don't want to take that risk. He began to make excuses. You see, he wanted the land, didn't he? But he didn't want Ruth. He didn't love Ruth. He didn't know her. He didn't love her. And so he said, I can't do it. Boaz, he was trying to get someone else to do it, wasn't he? He said, Boaz, you take her. You take her. I don't want her. You, you take the whole thing. He made an excuse. Now, do you think Boaz made an excuse when it was offered to him? No, no, no. We find he was very eager to redeem it. You ever gone to the shop and paid for something and you got a little paper receipt? What is a receipt? A receipt is proof that you've bought something, isn't it? You have that receipt, and if you need to return it, you can take the receipt and say, see, I prove I've paid for this. I'm not stealing it. I didn't walk off with it. And in those days, instead of a receipt, you would take your shoe off of your foot. And that's exactly what Boaz did. Boaz says, okay. So he removed his shoe off of his foot. He took off the shoe. It says in verse number nine, And Boaz said to all the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilean's and Malan's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malan, have I purchased to be my wife. And so he took off the shoe and he gave it to the other kinsmen, proving that he was the one that was going to redeem her. And so he did. He was very willing. He loved her. He was compassionate towards her. And because he loved her so much, he wanted to take her, to marry her, and to be his own. And that brings us to the last one, the letter M. Can you guess what's under the letter M? Mm, I'll, be I'll bet all of you have already guessed because you're all so clever. It's marriage. Not just marriage, though. What does it say here? It says marriage and marriage and a child. That's right. I have... A photo here of the day I was married. This is me and my wife at our wedding. And there was a wedding there in Bethlehem as well. And the Bible says in verse number 13, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. Not only was there a wedding, very soon there was one of these, except a real one. This is a, this is a baby doll. This is a toy, isn't it? I borrowed it from my daughters. But there was a real baby boy. And do you know what they called the boy's name? They called him Obed. And everyone was so happy. Naomi, who thought her life would only ever be bitter, when she held the baby boy in her arms, she was so happy. And she was so joyful. And God blessed Ruth. And God blessed Boaz in such a wonderful way in that he gave him this son. And it was a wonderful thing, but this baby was extra special for this reason. Look in verse number 17. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. Then notice this. Ooh, this is a really, really, really important part. He is the father of Jesse, the father of... David. Did you know that? That this son that was born was the grandfather of David, who would one day go on to be king of Israel? What an important family. I'll bet you didn't know. Maybe some of you did, but I'll bet you didn't know that Ruth, the lady from Moab, who was an outsider, who wasn't part of the children of Israel, who was so poor that she gleaned in the fields, that Ruth, became the great-grandmother of King David. She was brought in to the line of David. And furthermore, who else was born a thousand years later? 
Jesus Christ was born from that wonderful line of David. Jesus Christ, our Savior. And that really brings us to our application. Just like Boaz was compassionate. And he loved Ruth so much that he was willing to redeem her and to bring her into the family of Israel and into the family of Christ. Jesus Christ has done that with you. The Bible says we're not redeemed with corruptible things, not like Boaz, not with a shoe or not with gold or silver, but we are redeemed with the blood of Christ. Jesus Christ came to this earth because he loved us. And he died on the cross and shed his blood for you and me because he loves us. And he wants us to be part of his family. And that when someone comes and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they trust in him, just like Ruth was brought into the family of Boaz and into the family of Israel, God will bring you into his family. He will make you a son or a daughter of God. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful salvation. What a wonderful redemption you and I can have through Jesus Christ. I hope you know Jesus is your Savior. I hope you know that He has redeemed you and saved you. Hasn't it been a wonderful story, the story of Ruth? I've been so encouraged by it, and I hope you have too. Thank you for joining us today in the Pioneer Bible Club, and we hope that you enjoyed the Bible lesson today and the many different parts of the Pioneer Bible Club. Don't forget, Wednesday and Friday, the Pioneer Bible Club will be airing at 2 p.m., and I hope that you're getting in your coloring sheets. Your coloring sheet this week will be due by Wednesday, and the winner will be announced on Friday. So I hope you'll do your very best to get that in as soon as possible. Speak to your parents about downloading that on the Crown Christian Heritage Trust website. Also on the website, you can submit new prayer requests that you might have. We would love to be able to pray for you. And you can also learn how you can earn a free Bible on the website as well. The Pioneer Review Quiz is going to be coming out this week as well. So do your best to get that in by Wednesday evening as well. And the winners of all those who get 100% on the Pioneer Review Quiz will be mentioned right here on the Pioneer Bible Club. We hope that you have a great Lord's Day and look forward to seeing you next time. And that concludes another Pioneer Bible Club. What a fantastic day we've had together. And I'm glad you're learning that verse and all of these wonderful truths, a marvelous time we've had. And what a great Bible lesson. And we're praying that God would seal it in our hearts, that we wouldn't forget it, that we carry it with us. In fact, why don't you do this? Why don't you take that lesson you've learned and share it with somebody else this week? Would you do that? How many of you will commit to share that lesson with somebody else? Raise your hand. Good. I'm glad to see that. And let's do our very best to tell others the wonderful message that we find in God's Word. But let's pray now. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And we'll begin preparing for the next time we meet together, God willing, on Wednesday. Let's pray. Lord, we thank Thee for this day and for this club. And we commit it to Thee. We give it into Thy hands and ask of Thee, Lord, do with it what would please and honor Thee the most. And I pray that salvation would be the result of this club, that many children and their parents would come to know Thee as Lord and Savior. Take these truths, seal them in our hearts, Lord, and I pray that very soon we would hear of fruit and fruit that would remain. Be with us now as we part ways and keep us safe and bring us back together again very soon. We love Thee, Lord. Thank Thee for Jesus, our Savior. Help us to love one another the way that we should. Help these children to obey their parents and to honor them as they live before Thee, Lord. Give us a lovely rest of the day. And again, Lord, bring us back together soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you, children. Thank you for watching today. Thank you.